Hi folks, how are you doing? Hope you're all good. This is a video in response to David Stewart's video, which is called The Ones Who Walk Away From Omelas Analysis. Okay, so thank you David Stewart for making great videos over the years. I really enjoy them and I really enjoyed this video and I also thank you for introducing me to this Omelas story uh, or actually reminding me of it because I did hear about it years ago but this time I was interested enough by your video about it to check out the, the actual story itself and uh, luckily in this day and age you can just listen to these things on YouTube so uh, I did check out this uh, the story uh, in a 20 minute video which was a really cool reading out of the story by the way um, sorry I forget which um, what the exact title of that one and who did it but they did a very good job of reading out the story and uh, yeah so I think I'll just say a bit about my reaction to the story my feelings about the story and the moral question in the story first and then respond to some of the points you made David Stewart about uh, about the story so okay so very, a very rough summary um, the story is by Ursula Le Guin and written in the 1970s and it's a pretty short thing and it's a it just describes a a utopian place so everything's really good but the catch is that there's a child who has to suffer in this uh, cellar and no one can be nice to the child and uh, we're told that the to have all the good things they have to maintain this this, this sad uh, cruel situation with this with this one child um, and we're also told some people don't like that and they're walking away from homeless and but we don't know where they're going so i thought the story was great i really enjoyed it i haven't been reading stories like fiction much over the years and i don't really like the act of reading so it's really cool to me to have a story read out so I think I might just get into listening to a few more short stories um, instead of you normal YouTube videos which I spend a lot of my time listening to because it's so it's pretty easy to to check out a, to listen to it like 20 minute short story so I might do that I might even check out a, an Ursula Le Guin novel see how that goes I did actually listen to a, a full book on YouTube before. It was six hours long, but uh, that was Conquest of Bread by Peter Kropotkin, by the way. I thought it was pretty good. But uh, yeah, that's the only one I've done that with. I might try a bit of fiction now I've been introduced to this. So, the uh, as I said, I think I thought it was a really great story. Uh, I was actually quite moved by it. I don't normally cry in films, and certainly not in written fiction, but I actually was crying a bit at this. Very strange that I did that. And I listened to it again, and I was quite moved again. I think it is pretty well written from in my kind of my taste, and it's um, it's intelligently written, so... That was pretty cool. I'm pretty impressed by Le Guin based on that one story so far. So, um, yeah, I should I should mention that I have read the I read the Wikipedia entry on it, and that does mention that that it, the 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 idea the the um, the moral dilemma is is kind of taken from an old philosophy thing by a guy called William James it's also in in a Dostoevsky book so it's not it's not really or, that original as I think you David Stewart mentioned but uh, it is it is a good I think treatment of it 
brings this kind of idea to a more a different audience like a fiction fiction reading audience i guess so my answer to the dilemma in the story which I take to be, should would you walk away from Omelas or not, or would you stay in Omelas? My my response to that is a little bit complicated because the answer is kind of thrown off a little bit by the fact that the story near the end says something about the place away from Omelas being hard, you know that she doesn't want to describe it, it's harder to describe than, than Omelas, so she, you could argue, cops out of <laughs> describing where they're going. So, would I walk away from Omelas? I think I would stay in Omelas, to be honest, because I just don't know enough about this place that I might be going to. It could be worse, there could be more cruelty in this other place, but it's it's obviously weirder. That's the only thing we know about it, is it's weirder than homeless. That's not a very... That's not enough reason to walk away from a place that's, that's a utopia, or very close to a utopia for me. Also, I admit this, this thing where she says, well, walking away to a um, really mysterious place rather than what we would think would be the normal dilemma here which would be to just cancel this magical effect or whatever's, whatever's making it a utopia but insisting that you you accrue to this one person switching that off and, and sort of just living in a normal kind of town where you don't have all the utopian stuff but you don't have to do the cruelty to one person that would be the that would be the obvious the more obvious dilemma the more straightforward the more relevant i think dilemma and um i think as you point out uh, david uh walking away doesn't doesn't help the child so actually if you think that the treatment of the child is really cruel walking away from homeless won't do much for that unless literally everybody walks away from homeless but if you got the that kind of popularity why not get a political movement going to try and um free free the child so so uh anyway i suppose the main yeah the main to address the 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 the, the moral question as, as it perhaps should have been which would be if you're in homeless, would you vote to have the child free if there was a referendum on it? I would say not. I wouldn't free the child because, as you mentioned, David, in our current society, there, there is there are people who are mistreated just like that child. You mentioned people like slave labor to to make products i haven't really looked into how much slave labor is going into products that i buy i really ought to do that but i haven't uh, it's obviously pretty difficult i don't know i just go to the shops and i don't look into it enough um but there are there are other people suffering just like that child. One I think obvious example are the victims of car accidents, particularly if you think of pedestrians who haven't even committed the the wrong of driving a car. They literally just were trying to get across the street. They messed it up or the driver messed it up. And they end up in a situation as bad as the child in Omelas. Or possibly worse, they could be uh, paralyzed and in some sort of pain uh, chronic pain or something or some sort of combination of those things so quite a lot of people I think I mean much more than one person is suffering from that and I don't know the exact figures but I would think that to run a normal society like we live in to run the transport to run the power system and stuff You'd be doing pretty well if you don't um, if you don't seriously harm, you know. You you'd be doing pretty well if you harm just one child in each town. We've got all kinds of things. We've got we've transport, 
you think of the electricity I mean are you going to run we're going to run electricity to people's houses that is actually the safest way to probably keep the lights on because otherwise people will light candles and stuff and have more fires and stuff so but electricity is dangerous it kids kills the odd person you know, like kid like gets killed by a power line or something i'm making that up a bit but it could happen um i certainly think yeah there are people do get electrocuted also we got like things like burning coal coal power stations doesn't i believe that puts like stuff like uranium into the atmosphere which kills the odd person basically we are living in all of this except it's it's more than one person suffering and the happiness we get isn't just isn't anything like as good it's not it's not ideal also the all, all the things like the supposed to happen in homeless with no bad of side effects like sex not creating kids that no one wants to care for or whatever that that would happen in that would happen if you switched off this this thing that makes homeless a a utopia people would it wouldn't switch off people's desire to have sex with people it's gonna we're just gonna all the social ills are gonna come back so again we're just gonna have more neglected children and so on so for that reason and with a heavy heart i would vote to keep homeless as it is i've been thinking about I support uh, utilitarianism, but I have been thinking about stuff like is the happiness really worth the the kind of misery and so on. So I'm I'm coming round to thinking we shouldn't we shouldn't ha we should end society. But that's another that's for another video, and uh, I'm still sort of working on that in my head. But as it is, I mean, if it is a comparison with from homeless to others our society i think homeless is doing a better job of being not cruel to people basically um or not like not neglect not neglecting people so that's my thought on the on the story you mention uh you make two main complaints about the story one is the why do why do the people walk away? Why don't they try to free the child? I think the reason that it's better in the story that they walk away is it's it's just a slightly it's just a slightly eerie situation where people are walking away in a slightly weird possessed <laughs> zombieish way, but not quite. And I think that just that just is a bit more fun for a story than than talking about a referendum or a revolution. So revolutions, they're a little bit done to death in these shows like Star Trek and uh, Doctor Who. I think they have a, a revolution for pretty much every story at one point. And yeah, it's really cathartic and, and all the rest of it, but it's also a little bit cliched. I kind of prefer these utopias and dystopias where the people are just totally outgunned and they don't even they don't even consider that they can they can overthrow it. Uh, so, but but yeah, you did you did have uh, a little bit of a good point that that uh, the that walking away doesn't really solve the problem as I mentioned earlier and walking away doesn't 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 help the child so it does mess up the the moral dilemma in the story but I think if you're reading the story you kind of do absorb the the oh I did anyway I just took it as like should they be mistreating this child or not so I, t I think I got the moral dilemma that I should have got from the story but it, you also had this kind of otherworldly kind of weird thing where people are walking away so you also mention that you criticize the story that the, the utopia is is too hedonistic and i yeah i i 
I have been a utilitarian most of my life and I kind of do put quite a lot of value in pleasure. I think I'm probably on the same page as Le Guin if this story is anything to go by. So you seem to be saying at some point in the video that like hell, the like, pursuit of pleasure leads to hell even without the 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 child the, the 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 mistreated child and even without the the downsides i think if that's what you're saying i don't quite get it i don't i'm with Le Guin. i think the pleasure is pleasure's fine it's, it doesn't take away anything else i think that if you're having deep thoughts and enjoying them that's fine it's just as deep as as having it without the pleasure i agree you could probably take pursuit of pleasure too far but I don't see I don't see Omalas doing this I think in the in the story Le Guin is is at pains to mention that it isn't just a hedonistic place she isn't she doesn't think they should be taking drugs she doesn't think they are taking drugs but she thinks she thinks drugs should be available and sex should be available but I think she would like the rest of us, you wouldn't be advising people to spend all their energies sort of pursuing those things. And I personally don't see sex and drugs, especially if you, I mean, if you take, even as they are, but if you take away the downsides, I really don't see them as necessarily that harmful. Uh, I do tend to steer clear. I've, I mean, drugs are worse than sex, I think, because you're actually putting some in bad in your body which probably shouldn't really be there sex is more of a natural thing which you can you can wear a condom and basically you can take away most of the downsides there but with yeah with drugs i mean i don't even drink coffee anymore because i just kind of don't see the point in getting the, i don't like to be addicted to something so i, I do get it but I also think that pleasure does have a lot of value and it is just intrinsically good for people to have pleasure and that in practice it is especially if you take away all the downsides and stuff I don't I don't know how you can get from a, a world with a lot of pleasure and all of other stuff like deep thoughts and and poetry and all the stuff they mention in that I don't know how you can call that hell I find yeah I just find hell is just a very very far away far away a description like to use for that uh, so i think i've probably rambled on long enough yes yeah, but longer than your video now anyway uh i hope you found my ideas interesting i certainly found your video really interesting uh dave david stewart and uh keep up the good work all the best everybody